Welcome on today's lab on groundwater. We're going to be looking at artesian wells and pumping wells. How do they get recharged? How do they get discharged? In concept number eight, I'd like each one of you to know the difference between a piezometer and a pumping well. Piezometers are usually installed by researchers studying groundwater in an area. Since groundwater flows from high to low areas, knowing the height of the water in a number of piezometers relative to the mean sea level can allow you to map out the direction of the water flow. Piezometers are designed to open only at a single point in an aquifer and can usually be um, used to draw water samples from them. The construction of drinking wells, however, is normally regulated by state codes and are specific to a particular depth. Piezometers tend to be uh, constructed a little less durably than the drinking wells. So I'm pointing out uh, to you right now all the various uh, different kinds of piezometers and where they are in relationship to each other. And they're typically um, going to be dyed red. In concept number nine, we're taking a look at an artesian uh, aquifer that's under pressure. So please make sure on the actual artesian well, you have this small well cap inserted over it. And I want you to watch in particular on B, F, and G piezometers so that you can see uh, that those are under pressure because of the confining layer. In concept 10, I'd like each one of you to be able to observe what happens when a pumping well is, is in action. I want you to be able to see all the piezometers and how they react to uh, the actual pumping well. So make sure all the dyes are in the right place. For concept 11, make sure that you're able to locate uh, the artesian well and the, uh, the well cap that's on it. When you find it, make sure you also stain or add dye to, to that cap so that you can see all the water that's in the artesian well. On that well cap, you'll notice that the pressure from that artesian well or that kind of fracture that happens in the confining layer is, is pushing up uh, through the artesian well. So the, the, the pressure is going to be greater than what's in the unconfined um, un, um, aquifer. Now the confined aquifer obviously has that um, clay layer or confining layer on top of it. It can serve as a cap. But also, if you go to the right-hand part of the model where it's being recharged, it is what we call headspace. And that headspace is pushing down on that column of water through the confining layer and then up through the fracture that uh, is leading to the artesian well. So when we release the clamp to drain or discharge the lake, you'll notice uh, when it, that does that, it, when it gets past or underneath the artesian well, then it begins to fill back up with water from all the surrounding um, aquifers in the unconfined layer. And uh, as well as that, uh, the other thing that's filling up more than anything else is the artesian well. The water from the right-hand side of the tank that's recharging the confining aquifer is the thing that's making it happen. So um, as you can see, as I'm pointing out th those things, I'm going to shut down or clamp it off. And of course, the artesian well is going to fill up. And then when I let it down, it's going to go down. And then that little um, artesian well is going to start leaking out water from the right-hand side of the tank. And that is where it's recharged. In concept 12, we're going to be taking a look at how the rate of flow is affected by the texture of the soil particles. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, before you start, make sure you recharge the right-hand side of your tank start letting out some of the um, lake or river water. And then I want you to notice the flow rate, especially in, for instance, some of the coarse gravel versus the sand. Typically what you're gonna have with larger uh, soil particles, they're gonna be able to get through that uh, very, very quickly as that top diagram showed. The middle diagram shows that sometimes uh, it's not well sorted or poorly sorted, which means it it's a little harder for uh, water to pass through. Where things like clay, which very, very small uh, air particles, don't allow good flow. To complete concept number 13, what you'll have to do is you're going to have to uh, add another bottle over to the right-hand side where you can recharge your groundwater model. And then open up the lake or river outlet. 
as it flows out, what I would like you to do is I'd like you to watch the piezometers and, and how they respond to the discharge of the lake, but also look at the lake or, or river as, as well. Uh, as you can see, it, it continues to flow out primarily because at the early part of a season, like early in the summer, there's still recharge of the unsaturated uh, area going into the lake or the river as I'm demonstrating here. It goes through the channels of, of gravel, etc. But late in the year, like this picture will, will uh, show you, is that as the um, uh, as the unconfined aquifer uh, um, actually discharges, it discharges it in, into the river. But the river is trying to recharge the aquifer. So there's always this give and take. To complete concept number 14, what you'll have to do is pump from uh, well number two. And I want you to notice in particular most of those uh, piezometers just around well number two. And you can see that they're being drawn down quite quickly. And of course, being dyed red, I should be able to collect a lot of red dye into the flask over on the right hand side. But as you can see, it's creating um, kind of a, a, a cone of depression right around it. Um, but all of those particular piezometers around that particular pump are being impacted by it. As you can see there, the red dye kind of shows you um, uh, um, the, the actual impact of that particular well. And on this picture here, it shows you unsaturated zone right at the water table. Below it and just right around the casing is that cone of depression. Well, there you have it. Concepts 8 through 14. Don't forget, we still have 14 more to go. We'll see you in the lab. Thank you very much. See you soon.